Just, Just give me a hi. Welcome. Welcome. It, it is 3.02 Eastern time here in New York City. And what a great day to talk here because <laughs> this market <laughs> is wild. I mean, if, if you're in trades today, I don't care if you went long, if you shorted, today was a wild, wild market day. And so what I'm going to do here today is talk to you, going to kind of be a little bit more relaxed here because we have some extra time today. Go through the presentation, take our time, answer any questions as we go along, flip back and forth if I need to with the charts, uh, and then talk at the end when I'm done with the presentation about the market today and where I think we're going next. So for those of you that came and don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own the Stock Swoosh. And, and I started, started trading in 2008, which seems like a million years ago, actually, um, now that it's 2022. 2022. But it, I didn't make money when I started trading. Uh, I don't think anybody wakes up one day and starts to trade and makes money. I mean, while there's, <laughs> there's a possibility that somebody could have done that in their lifetime in this planet, the fact is most people, when they begin to trade, lose money. They don't know what to do. So today we're going to talk about really what is important is how you can make money trading. Because even though trading's fun, it's fun to press the buttons, it's fun to read charts, it's fun to participate in chat, chat rooms and make friends that are traders. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters, the only thing that counts, is that you are winning. So you have to have more winning trades than losing trades. The difference between the market we're in right now is that the market is really connected uh, to overseas events. And some of you actually may be overseas, but trading in the U.S. stock market. But every single market right now is really tied into what's happening Obviously, with the Russia-Ukraine, I don't know if you want to say war or if you want to say conflict, uh, but it's going on. It's going to continue. I do not think that this ends today or tomorrow or even next week. So as a trader, as an individual trader, you have to find a way that you can make money in any conditions in any market. But I find that in these types of markets, you can capitalize on the momentum and the volatility if you know how to trade it, okay? If you know how to trade it, then you can really make a lot of money during these periods, which again, we have not seen for quite some time. And I don't think it's going to end because Fed, the Fed is going to increase interest rates this month. They're talking about a quarter percent. If they decide to increase it a half percent, that will create more volatility. So there's all kinds of interesting things going on right now. So let's get into it. So if you would like to contact me after this presentation, if you would like to try the live trading room for the rest of this week, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP if you have questions, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I do appear on TV uh, in between trading and teaching. It's one of these things where right now, I'm not back in the studio yet. I'm still doing it from my home, which is actually very convenient for me because I can jump onto Skype and I can talk on television about the markets. And again, it's been a volatile time. People are worried. People are seriously concerned. I was at the hairdresser, I was at the salon uh, last week, and my hairdresser said, oh my God, I, I'm worried about my 401k. And I said, listen, if you're not going to retire in the next two years, I wouldn't worry about it. But people are starting to get scared. And you can see that with the selling that we've had just really in the last several days. Uh, and I'm going to put in here at the beginning, even though I have this at the end, if you decide you want to come and learn and sign up for my services, the next class is March 26th and 27th. You can email me if you want to sign up for this class. You cannot do it through the website. Again, I'm going to talk to you about what I do today, but I'm putting this at the beginning in case we don't get to this at the end. And I am doing a webinar special for David and all of his people. If you sign up at the end of this week by Friday for the class at the end of March, you will receive the trading room free to the end of the year. And again, you can come and do a trial this week and email me if you want, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and be in the room. Now, if you want to do options, I do options too. I have two subscription uh, choices for people. One is six months, one is 12 months. Again, if you want to sign up for that, the second you sign up, you start getting the trades. I will say that we have had a huge success in doing options this year. This market particularly, particularly because of the volatility, has made for some great options trading because again, when you're doing options, when you get momentum and volatility, if it's going in your direction, you can make a lot of money. And we have, we, we, we've been lucky to get that. But it's all about the picks and it's about the direction and it's about getting the timing right in options. We'll talk about that more in a bit. So anyways, why are you here today? You know, on a three o'clock, on a Tuesday afternoon, either you're completely bored and have nothing else to do, or you absolutely have a purpose for being here. And one of those purposes may be that you really actually generally want to trade. You really want to make money in the market. You're not making money in the market. You really want to figure out how to do it. 
you need a new trading strategy, you are not doing one that works. And again, this market may make it difficult for you because if you don't know what you're doing, you could be losing. So losing is a problem. And I said to people, if you're losing, if you're bleeding money, you need to stop, take a step back. There's nothing wrong with taking a break from trading. And again, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. So many times people blame themselves when they lose. While you may have made a mistake, that's true. Sizing yourself, exit, something like that. The reality is that it may just be that the strategy that you're using doesn't work. Maybe it never worked or maybe it's not working right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? In these conditions. So the best thing you can do, instead of going heavier, heavier, heavier in or doubling down, which I know people love to do, traders love to double down, you can't do that when things aren't working. So be smart enough, seriously, to take a step back and say, wait a minute, let me reevaluate. It doesn't mean you have to quit trading forever. It just means that you're taking a little bit of a break. You might be here also because you're new and you never traded before and you don't know where to start. I have that with some people too. Um, I have some people that have started trading with me this year that have never traded in their life and they started out in a demo and that's okay too. Trade in a demo till you get used to it, till you figure out what you're doing, pressing the buttons so you don't press any fat fingers. Then once you know what to do, then you can trade with live money. And again, getting back to what I was saying, at the end of this lecture, we're going to talk about the market volatility, and today was really just a great day for that. And again, I don't know how we're going to close, to be honest with you. I gave a couple of different scenarios how we could end up the day when I was running the trading room this morning at 9.30, right before the open, we are talking about it. But it's 3.09. We will be here after the close. We will look at what happens after hours tonight. We can talk about it because I'll be here. But the fact is, I don't know how we end up today. So that'll be interesting, too. And we'll talk about that if you want to stay around for the next hour. But anyways, right now, people are so concerned about so many things. They're concerned about their 401ks. They're concerned about market volatility. They're concerned about inflation. So people are in this weird situation right now. We, we're getting out of COVID, or at least here in New York, we're finally getting out of COVID. But some states, some places across the world have already been out of COVID, not, not New York City, unfortunately. I hope this is the end of the line for us, and we're finally going to get through it. But people are now getting worried about something else, not COVID, but inflation or market volatility. I don't know what it is, but people just feel when they're 401k, when they get this statement every quarter and look at it or at the end of the year, if you look at it at the end of the year, once a year, people feel wealthier when their retirement savings is growing. Again, they're making money without doing anything. If you were invested in the market prior to the 2016 election, actually, the market went straight up this was and i know i'm going back a while here i'm going back to 2016 we gapped down on that morning the day after the election trump won the market just went straight up we made a million new highs 2017 2018 2019 2020 then COVID hit remember we dropped off march 2020 in COVID. that was still nowhere near nowhere near the 2016 lows so really if you've been in the market from 2016 election day after and beyond, your, your retirement account has exploded because we've had so many new highs in the market. And again, many, many stocks, and I could list them all, have continued to grow with the market. Now things have changed. Now things have changed. And again, going back to what I was saying, for some reason, when people, even, if it, even though it's not real tangible money that they could take out right now without paying a tax penalty to do so before the retirement age, people feel wealthier when the retirement is growing. They tend not to be worried about money. They tend not to worry so much about inflation. And now we're in the situation where the market started to sell off. Now we have inflation, increased interest rates, market volatility. It's kind of like the perfect storm here for people to be concerned about things. Everything is going up. Food, gas, housing. You've seen housing go up ever since COVID. And again, looking at New York City, that's so crazy to me because I, I can't ex even explain why housing went up here in new york because it's still such a disaster here right now but in a lot of places even pennsylvania where i'm from i mean i can't believe the prices that they were getting for houses uh back since COVID. but things are going up do i think it changes anytime soon no because the reasons the underlying reasons for why we're in this environment there's no reason to expect that it's going to change because nothing is changing the administration that's making some decisions the economy things that are happening nothing's really a set decision that's going to change the reasons for what is happening right now today. And this is nothing to do with what's happening overseas, but again, that plays into it too. So right now, you, me, everybody that's out there, people are looking for extra ways to make money, probably more so than any other time. 
while there was the stimulus package that happened uh, within the last year and a half, that's pretty much going away, okay? So people relied on that, now that's gone away, and again, people had to go back to work. If they were out of work, people must go back to work, but people still need more money. And they think, well, I would like a second income. What can I do? What can I do? The nice thing about trading is that you can do it for half an hour a day. If you want to day trade, you could be in and out between 9.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning. You do not have to sit between 9.30 and 4. In fact, I prefer not to do that, and I rarely do. Now, yesterday I did a short in the market late that I held into the close, but it's rare that I do that. The market power trending yesterday, again, we will discuss the market in the second hour, but the fact is it's very, very rare for the market to power trend. I would say there's probably about five or six days a year that the market power trends. And when I say power trend, it doesn't mean go up or down. It means either direction, meaning that a power trend is something that happens and goes all day long, where the market opens at the low in a long and rallies all day and closes at the highs or vice versa in a short. That up or down is so, 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 so rare. You're not seeing that today, for example, but you did see that yesterday in the market. Normally, if you want to do options, if that's something that you're looking to do, like I talked about earlier, you do not have to sit at all. You get the trade, you put in the trade, you take the trade into the open, and you can put an immediate sell order. It's a cancel day order, it's a limit order, where the trade will sell out if it hits the number that you put to sell it at, and if it doesn't, you're still in the trade. So again, you don't have to watch it. What I find so interesting about 2022 is people are coming to me from all walks of life wanting to trade. Now, most of them are looking to do options um, for whatever reason. They find that easier if they have another job. But I literally have so many different people doing so many different careers that I, I almost should make a list because, for example, I have a gentleman that's a trucker. I did not know this when he signed up. He is in his truck delivering packages all day long. I'm not going to say the company works for it, but he's trading. He's trading options. I said, how are you doing that when, you, when you're out in the truck? I mean, it's different if you're in an office and you put the order in or something and you go back and check it. He's on the road. He's on the road all day long and he's doing really well. And so he has his computer in his truck and he's trading. Figure it out is what I say. No matter what your career is, no matter what you're doing, don't think you can't do this. You don't have to put a lot of time to doing it. It's something that you could do right now. And then as you get better, you could do it maybe full time later on. But again, people are looking to do extra things to make extra money. And so, again, it goes back to the same thing as I was talking to. How do you make money in the market? How do you do it consistently? That is where many people struggle, and that is one of the problems that many people have. Things that they were doing in 2020 or 2021, ways that they were trading, are not working now because the market has changed. So learning what to do is very important. I think it's important in any type of market environment, but I really think it's important when we're risking your own money if you want to trade at all. And I know that everybody just wants the quick buck. They want to go into it, write a chat room, get an idea, have it work, make money, be done. The idea is that you want to be able to learn how to do it. While I offer subscription services where people aren't learning, they're just getting the trades, I really think that learning is important. I think that you will trade better if you know what to do, and I think we'll make more money, and you can risk more if you know what to do. So, I mean, <laughs> it's totally up to you. Well, uh, the tracker that I just gave the example, he has not done any classes yet at all. One day he probably will when he have, has time, but for now he's just taking the trades. I do think it's important, though, for people to learn. I really think it makes a big difference long term how much money you make. So this is the chart I, I clipped this from today. Obviously, that was this is almost two hours ago, around 1.30 in the afternoon. This is a QQQ daily chart of the market in 2022. So let's just take a look at, I'm just going to go all the way back to the beginning of this year. Here we go. So again, this is January 3rd. We started up. So the market, and again, take it out to the left. The last time the market made a brand new all-time high, and I'm talking about the QQQs here. We'll talk about this spot a little bit as well. The last time the market made a brand new all-time high was basically, I think it was Thanksgiving week. Yeah, it was 11.22. 11.22. So November, December, January, February, we're into March, four and a half months ago, basically. That's a long time for this market. If you have been participating in the market, if you have looked at a chart at all, if you have been trading actively like we have, I can tell you the last time the market went four and a half months without making a new high. I cannot think, and again, I probably would have to go back to prior to 2016. Seriously. So the market's been on a tear, and now all of a sudden, 
It's not. Is the market in a downtrend? No. Everyone's screaming on TV today and yesterday, and I wasn't on any channels today or yesterday because I was too busy trading, but everyone's screaming we're in a bearish market territory. That is not how I see it. So as the stocks push, the rules, the things that I look at, that is not how I see it. I do not look at things as the percentages. I 100% disagree. If I go in anywhere tomorrow, I will say the, that exact thing. But people are saying that. And obviously when people watch the news and they watch TV and they get scared and they hear that and they don't know anything about the market or trading or charts, they worry then about, like we talked about, their 401k, their investments, and everything else. But you see right now, even here today and in the last couple of months since the beginning of the year, how much the market has changed since 2022. But getting back to what I was saying about following your dreams, working for yourself, just like the trucker guy, it's possible. You know, if you have things that you want to do, sometimes you got to do the work. What is the work? Figuring it out to make the time in your life. You know, spending the money to sign up for a service, spending the money to sign up for a class, spending the time to learn in a class, opening up an account, going through all the process of the paperwork, learning how to press the buttons, trying to figure out in your lifestyle how to make time to do this, even if you have two kids, a job, and everything else. The reality is the work sometimes is just trying to figure out how you're going to do it, how you're going to make the time in your schedule and in your life. No one said it's easy to just all of a sudden decide to up and do and learn something new. That's the process. That's what it is. But you'll be far better if you do it now than fast forward six months from now, 12 months from now, when at the end of the day, you're like, oh my God, I wish I would have done this. I can't believe the cost of gas now. I should have started doing this on the side or whatever the case may be. Because again, before you know it, <laughs> it's going to be July 4th. I mean, this year I already feel has just flown, flown by. So if you really want to work for yourself, if this is something that you want to do, sit down, get a plan of action together and figure out how you're going to make it happen. But it is possible to work full time and trade and make money on the side. Like I said, there's people doing it. I can name lots of people from doing lots of different things that are doing it. So you can. So don't think that you can't. You absolutely, absolutely can Getting back to what I was saying earlier, let's talk about inflation, what's going on. So the biggest thing I've seen is food prices and gas prices go up. Now, what happens when gas prices go up? You could say, okay, I live in New York. I actually don't drive a car. I don't drive at all. In fact, I may never drive a car again, and I don't even care. I don't miss driving. Congestion is, is terrible in New York, and obviously you have to pay for parking and everything else. But the fact is that Everything you pay for, even if you don't drive, even if you don't own a car, every single solitary thing that you pay for, the price will go up. Why? Because how are you going to get it? How is it going to get to you? How is the products and services and goods and things that you want going to get to you? People drive them to you in trucks, just like the trucker guy that I just mentioned. So this affects everything, 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 everything. So again, people tend to be more conservative when prices of things go up, it's a regular thing that they get. So gas, if you drive and if you drive back and forth to work every day, that's something that you can't like live without. What else can't you live without? You can't live without food. You have to feed yourself. You have to feed your family. I, I snipped this uh, from my Amazon cart. I am shocked about some of the cost of things. And again, I live in New York. So this is the most expensive place to buy food, bar none in the country, even more so than California. Even though gas in California is more expensive, I think, than gas in New York, but it's pretty close. I went to the, get to the cart the other day, the organic eggs, one dozen in New York City was almost $8. I said, I called my mother and said, you're not going to believe this. Guess how much eggs are in New York. I mean, I bought them. I bought them. What am I not going to eat eggs? Of course I'm going to eat eggs. But it's just the point. It's the point. If somebody has a family with four kids, I mean, you know, these things start to add up. You can't live without gas. You can't live without food. These are staples and things you need. So what are you going to do? Again, it goes back to the same philosophy, back to what I was saying, become financially independent. Make the decisions for yourself. Instead of whining, complaining, or getting depressed about it, or wondering when this is going to ever end, the reality is you have to take the bull by the horns and make some decisions for yourself. How are you going to take advantage of the situation, which is the volatility in the market, and make this be a choice that you make for yourself that you're going to do something else in your life where you have extra money coming in. And you know the way that it is. The prices of things never go down. I've noticed that in New York already. It's not like, oh, you know, once the price of gas goes down and the price of costing to drive the eggs in New York City is going to go down. No, 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 no. Probably that's going to be what eggs are. 
Like, that's it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, prices never seem to go down once they go up. Gas is different. Gas is different. But for different products and things, I've noticed that even big items, like say you want to go buy a washer and dryer or something, even big things that we buy, once again, are the prices of those things going to go down? Probably not. Probably not. So any questions here as I'm going through? Just look. No, okay. So anyways, let's get into the nuts and bolts again of being practical. We talked about why you might want to do this, why it's important to learn to do this, why you would maybe want to make more money trading. It could be a sacrifice that you have to make the time and the cost to learn how to do it so you can be somewhere in a month from now or six months from now with this where it's actually working in your favor, meaning that the money is coming in towards you every week, every month. So I like to look at trading as a bigger picture. I call it chunking it out. $500, $1,000, $200, $1,000, $3,000, like that. I look at it as a big term picture, week by week, month by month. Sometimes when you look at big numbers, people say, oh my God, I could never make six figures a year trading. I don't know how to do it. Take it, break it down. If you are willing to just look at it, Piece by piece by piece, you're going to be a lot better. Even if you take a trade and have a losing trade, I absolutely do have some trades that lose. My win ratio is around 80%. So far this year, though, it has been higher than that because we've had so many good trades. But if you come and take 10 trades and we figure two, we're going to lose. Two, we're going to lose. You have to account for that. But it's not the end of the world if you take a trade that loses. If you know you have a high win ratio, that the next one's probably, probably going to win because it's about probabilities. It's about probability. So it's the idea of chunking it out, having more winners and losers and constantly booking profits along the way. So how can you earn money trading? You have to have a strategy. And this is where I think a lot of people falter. Number one, they trade and they don't have a strategy. They take ideas willy-nilly from wherever. Okay, that's not a good idea. Number two, people trade and do something in the market that they think is a strategy that works. And again, it really isn't a strategy at all, or conditions have changed, and it maybe used to work, and now it doesn't work. And now it just doesn't work at all, okay? So these are two things that I think are extremely important that people get in the situation where they're doing something, and what is the thing that a lot of people have been doing? Well, they've been buying the dip. If you've been buying the dip this year in 2022, you are losing. Hands down, period, end of story, full stop. Now, again, I didn't have time today to watch TV. I, there's some shows I could have put on. I could put them on tomorrow, watch the same thing. We'll talk about the market, how it closes today when we're done. But the reality is, let's go all the way back. Here's a daily chart. Take it up. Boom. Here we are. Now, what happened here if you were looking to buy the dip this year? First of all, buying the dip is not a strategy. It just isn't. A lot of people I'm on TV with do it too. I mean, I, you know, I would say it to their face as well if I ever go back in the studio, but it is interesting to me how people that are financial advisors actually, which I am not, but people that are financial advisors buy the, tell their people to buy the dip too. It does not work. It's not a strategy. Now, it worked in 2020 after COVID dropped, and it worked in 2021 too. Why? Because the market kept going and going and going and going and going and going and going. So it worked most of the time for the last 18 months, and now it's not. But over the life of, the, of anything that you do, any stock, anything into the market, it doesn't work. And I'm telling you that from experience trading for 14 years. But the reality is because people were doing it last year, they made money going stocks that were strong. They made money buying the dip in stocks that were weak. People made money buying anything, anything at all. And it, and it worked, but it really isn't a strategy. It's not a good strategy, even if you want to tell me, oh my God, it is. The fact that you made money doing it last year, if in fact you did this, does not mean it was a good idea. Now, if you say, well, I was a, have my retirement account and I wanted to, I don't care, it's boop a doop a doo At the end of the day, if, if I said to you, listen, and I'm not saying this, I'm saying if the market would go to 300 or 275 in the queues, would you rather buy there or would you rather buy at 330? I mean, even if you say to me, well, I'm in it for the long term, no, many people cannot afford the pain. You're not in pain. Again, like I was talking to the salon at the, at the hairdresser lady. You're not in pain if you've been in the market with your 401k since 2016 or any time after that because the fact is the market kept going up. So even though we sold off and even though you don't like to see the market come in and your profits disappear, the fact is you're still up overall. 
you're up overall if you've been in the market for years and years and years and years and years. Again, we're nowhere near the numbers that we were. In fact, we've doubled. We can, we can, I'll pull it up and we can look at it then the next, the next hour. We've doubled even since then, you know, five, six years ago. But anyways, buying the dip didn't work. Oh, here we go. Didn't work, boom, drop. Didn't work, boom, drop. Didn't work, boom, drop. Didn't work, drop. Didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. Here, this isn't gonna work either. So I don't even care how we close today, it's not gonna work. So people came in and tried to buy the dip today, it's not gonna work. So people are losing. And I can tell as a person that runs a training educational business, I can tell people are losing because I can tell by the communication that the emails that they send to me that are people that are looking to become clients and are looking to become customers the things that they're saying to me. It's almost like people in this desperation and they don't understand why buying the dip isn't working. It doesn't work. That's why. The fact that it did work in 2021 has nothing to do with anything at all. You got lucky if it worked. Sometimes anything works, quite frankly. I mean, sometimes you can short the strongest stock in the world, like Tesla, and it would work. That doesn't mean you should ever do that. So, I mean, we're in a situation now where people kind of have to take a hard look at their trading and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, what the heck am I doing? Is, should I even be doing this? You know, did this ever work? You know? So you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everyone does. Why? They simply do not have a strategy that consistently works in any market. And they will often do something that worked one time, even if it didn't work 10 times after that. And they'll continue to chase the one time that it worked and lose 10 times after that because they swear up and down that one time it worked. I think the biggest example of that is GME, the stock. Now, I never played that stock, and unfortunately, I cannot touch it and will never play it again because it's ruined because of the way that it's been traded by the Reddit traders. Nothing in the chart is, it, the, the chart is just a disaster. It's basically flat mine now, but because people made a lot of money in that at one point, and I don't think that was a year ago now, actually, people insisted that it would work over and over and over and over again. So people have lost money in that since then. It's never done what it did that one period of time. People have lost in it, and they don't understand that it's just not going to work. So if someone said to you, okay, you could do this, and you could make 25000 people think, oh, I can do that same thing and make 25000 every single time, not if it doesn't really work. So sometimes you can do anything and have it work as a once-off. Do you follow me? It doesn't mean it works consistently. And that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing about trading. Making money is about consistent gains. Every day, every week, every month, every year, year over year, in any market conditions, it's not sometimes, it's as often as you decide to trade. This does not mean every single trade. If every single trade that I did work, then I would never have to size myself. I could risk my whole account in every trade or every day or every week, and I don't do that, and that would be silly, and that would be foolish. Nor do I tell other people to do that. If someone comes and they have $5,000 to risk to trade options, you could trade options with $2,000, you can open up an account. It doesn't mean you should risk $2,000 in one trade, and you shouldn't even risk $1,000 in a trade, okay? So at the end of the day, the thing is that you have to look at it as, again, chunk it 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 out it's consistent gains not sometimes you take an account if it's small you can build it up you have another account and you get to it and you build it up that's how you do it it's building it over time it's just like anything really that you would do if you think about it like if you were playing a sport when you first learned the sport you probably weren't very good then you learned the sport and you got good because like for example say you were a golfer and you started golfing and you started playing more and more and more and you took lessons and then you got better and better and better and over time over the months and over the years you you became this excellent excellent golfer it's similar to trading when you're doing the same thing over and over and a lot of people just don't do it the reality is that you've got to get to the point where you are actually doing something that consistently works so you can build your account, whether you have a small account or whether you have a large account. Now, going back to what I was saying here in 2021, this is the QQQs. So remember, I just told you 2021 was a very, very, very bullish year. Here's the beginning. And 2020 was bullish too after the drop off in COVID. Oh, actually here, I do have it in here. So this is the COVID drop. See it? 
right in here. Then we had a gap up here. This was April. Now I'm going all the way back, April 2020. This is almost two years ago. Take it to the right. Look here. I said we basically doubled in price. Look, we did. So this was the QQQs in April of 2020. Now go up where we were here in November. We went over 400. So we actually did double from, in, in, from April of 2020 to November of 2021. This was here, the last time we knew high in the queues, the market double. So that's why really, even though we sold off here, again, like I'm saying this, we're not in a bearish market here whatsoever at all. We're just not. But it is scary for people because from this number, from 400 to lose almost 100 points is scary to people. Okay, it just is. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying earlier about people buying the dip as a strategy. Here was the beginning of 2021. This is January. You can see how we just kept going up, up, and then the summer. Look at the summer of last year. Summer of last year was really bullish. And then we lifted here into the fall. This was the next push up. Remember this? And this was actually when the election was. A year after. So, I mean, it really was just one of those times where, I don't know, it seems like every time after the election we do have a bullish move. Let's find November 2020. So here is November. This was November 2020. We were right around 290. Yep. And then here we were. That was 100 plus points. So from here to here was 200 points. From November 2020 election was over 100 points. Look at that. So that's the market, the whole last 18 months since COVID. So how do I make money trading? What do I do? I trade gaps. Now, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. The US stock market opens every day at 930 and then closes every day at four o'clock. So there are something called after hours trading, which is post market trading and pre market trading, which is in the morning. I do not trade that. But that is when the gap is occurring. So again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. You have bullish gaps, you have bearish gaps. Gaps happen every day in the market. Gaps happen every day in stocks. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of things that gap. So how do you know what to trade? Well, I determined and created a system that took me about three years to determine what stock is going to have a big move in the gap. And that was how I determined how to trade it whether I'm going to go long it or whether I'm going to short it. So I go long stocks and I short stocks, but I will tell you that I prefer to short. We were talking about, you know, how do you become consistent? Part of it is for me, not just focusing on one strategy, which for me is the gap, which we're gonna talk about here, but it is also about the fact that I do go to the short side first. So I have found that focusing on selling Shorting really has given me an edge in the market because many traders do not know how to short. Again, we were just talking about buying the dip. Many people are comfortable with that. They're very, they're much, 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 much more comfortable. Retail traders are more comfortable going long than they are going short. I personally do not know why that is. But again, having a business as long as I have, I've noticed that myself. People are just more comfortable going long until they learn how to short. And until they learn actually how to short and can see how exciting it can be. We've seen since the beginning of 2022 how profitable shorting can be. Again, today is a wild day. We'll look at how we close after four. But today the market actually gapped down. So again, the market opened today lower than where it closed yesterday. Where is the market going to gap tomorrow? I don't know. I never know until I get up in the morning. So there is pre-market trading, there's post-market trading, and that is where the gap occurs. What happens during that time? Institutional traders, big traders, big, big positions are put on and off during that time. I don't predict the gap. Like I'm not predicting where we're gonna gap tomorrow morning in the market, even though we're gonna look at it. I'm predicting where it's going to go if it gaps up or down. And so I see it in the morning when I get up and then I make it a prediction. What should we do? Should we short this? Should we go long this? Okay. Again, I personally prefer to short. I think that gives me a niche, but it actually just 
is something that I find is advantageous because panic comes in when a price of a stock goes down. And that is something that can happen lickety split like that very, 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 very fast. Whereas when something's going up, if a price is rising in something, and actually oil is, gonna, is an exception, we'll look at some oil stocks. It's very rare that something will continue up, 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 up very, very fast. So you'll have almost like climactic moves down, but it's rare to see panic buying up. I do think you've kind of seen that in the oil market, though, in the recent days, where it just seems like it's going straight up. And again, this has to do with what's happening overseas, but you've seen bullish gaps in oil stocks where the price continues to rise. And it's kind of like panic buying where things just keep going and going and going. Okay. Any questions here so far? Okay. Let's talk about what is a gap. Again, a gap is a difference between the, the close and the open. This is a chart of Netflix. Now I'm going to go back here to January. This is before the earnings. We'll talk about that gap in a minute. This stock closed here at the beginning of the year. Feels like a long time ago. Price, if you can even believe it, this is where the price of Netflix was to start out 2022. It was well over $550. Then it gapped down here, boom. So it closed here, right around 550, wherever it was, and opened down here right around 540. Fell, boom. Then it cl uh, closed here, this was before the earnings, right around 500 and change. Gap down here again, where? Around 390. This had earnings at on this night. It was a Thursday night and the stock tanked. So this is a gap down. This is a gap down. They look different, but they were both good gaps and you could have shorted them and we did. The date of this was February 21st, <coughs> which again, that seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't even... Um, at the, where the price was at the beginning of the year. So those are bearish gaps. Let's talk about bullish gaps. Here, this was back, again, date in here was February 28th, or no, it was, I'm sorry, it was January 28th. Closed here, gapped up. So we closed here, again, we're on Netflix, around 370 and change, whatever, gapped up here, rallied, ran up through $400. So this was back the end of January. So first we had this, that was January 21st, we gapped down. Then we had this, this was a bullish gap, it gapped up. So again, a gap up is the difference where the close and the open is a higher price. Down here, the close was here and the open was a lower price, okay? So, so you have, have many gaps in Netflix, Netflix. A, a million here, here. look at them all. all. Every single one, you can go through, analyze it in the morning, go through the process, rate them, determine, do you want to go long it? Do you want to short it? Do you want to do nothing? Okay. Sometimes there's nothing to do. Sometimes it's okay to not trade at all. That's okay too. If there's no good setups, no good gaps, you do nothing. Let's talk about Facebook. Again, it seems like a long time ago here. Facebook was up here at 320, closed, gapped down, open. Open here around 235 and change fell, boom. Fell, fell, fell. Again, when was this? February 3rd. So this is more than a month ago. This collapsed out of the sky from earnings as well. Another, another really uh, big market stock that was a disaster, quite frankly, on the earnings to start out the beginning of this year, 2022. Because this stock, again, was up here and lost basically 100 points from the earnings. Now, is every gap I do something like this? No. We did this little guy over here. We did this trade. I did this. This wasn't like some monster gap. We did it. Boom. It worked. In fact, I think we were in it beforehand. But anyways, I'm showing you here, again, the power, the power of the gap and where this went since that point, if you wanted to do an option or a swing trade even, this was at 2.30, okay, remember this is February 3rd, boom, 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 this just fell off a cliff, low in here on, this was the 24th of February, it broke 200, it was at 190. So again, you know, this is momentum and really shows the power of the gap in this case here particularly and also Netflix too.
okay? Let's talk about what is a gap. Let's go over the spy. Again, the spy looks a little different than the QQQs. Why? We started out the year in a gap up in the spy. I'm going to take it all the way over. Remember I told you the last time the QQQs made a brand new all-time high was November 2021. Not the case with the spy. Not the case at all. Again, this seems like a very long time ago. Take it over. We didn't get to 500. We tried to get to 480. The last new high in the SPY was the beginning of January. So we actually did make a new high in the SPY this year, 2022. But again, that was a very long time ago. We're in March. So we've had a lot of gaps in the SPY, gaps you could have played. Let's take a look at it. This one closed here, gapped up. What happened here? This is a bullish gap. So the stock price or the market, this is the ETF for the S&P, gapped up overnight. Theoretically, you could have gone long there as a day trade, got in, got out. I did not go long this as an options trade. I don't know if there was any profit to do that in there or what the profit would have been. Now here was a gap down. It happened immediately after it closed here, gap down. This started the sell off that really took us down here. This was in the middle of February. We have never recovered from that. Look at the slide that we had here. Again, how did this happen? We're gapping down, we're following through with selling. It's selling, here's another gap here. Closed here, gap down, fell. Closed here, gap down, fell off a cliff. Now today here in the SPY, we opened neutral, but we did open down in the queues. And again, we'll see where we close here in 15 minutes. So gaps happen every day. It's not about finding gaps. There's thousands of them. It's about finding the very, 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 very specific ones to trade. You only need one good trade a day. If you can find one good trade a day, you can make money. You could do as an option. You could do as a day trade. Okay. Either way, it's the idea of finding one good one and then just adding size onto it. Size. So what do you need to make trading work? You need a strategy and something that sets up consistently in the market and you've gotta have something that moves. The stocks that I just showed you, the charts I just showed you were daily charts, those stocks moved. You can't really make any money, in my opinion, doing penny stocks. You have to take way too much size and way too much risk in stocks that don't have enough volume, so we do not train penny stocks. I'm trading stocks that are companies that you know, they have earnings reports, they have tons and tons of volume, they have momentum, they move, you know what the products are, the things they produce and what they do. And so I feel there's a safety in that of being in something that has a lot of volume, particularly options when we're doing options as well. But you have to have something that you're looking for, like you're trying to, like I'm trying to hit a bullseye every day. I take it and I'm trying to hit that bullseye every day. The chances of me hitting one bullseye a day are pretty high. I got done telling you around 80%. The chances of me hitting bullseye, 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 bullseye all day from 9.30 to 4, the odds go down. I'm probably not going to hit a bullseye every time if I throw a dart all day from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. Do you understand? That's why, again, trading success has to do with honing it down to intricate, intricate details so that you can just find one really, really good thing that's going to move and a volume of momentum that you can add size to it to make money to chunk it out. The concept we were talking about, about the consistency, about trying to build up your account. But for me, it's just about the reliability in my gap system and then sticking to one thing. So if you're sticking to buying the dip, you're losing all year. Literally, unless you're getting out with very small profits in the in the in the small rallies that we've had, none of which have helped since the beginning of 2022. And so I think that is difficult for people when they're so, so, so used to doing something that worked even for 12 months. And 12 months isn't nothing, but really trading is something that you should undertake and undergo that you want to do for years and years and years and years and years and a long time. Not something that should be just a shot in the dark or where you're gambling, or where you're doing something just periodically. It should be something you're saying, I'm gonna do this thing and it's gonna work and I'm gonna learn it, and I'm gonna do it over the course of my whole lifetime, and I'm gonna do it for short-term trading, and I'm gonna do it for long-term trading, and everything else. And that's how you really get to the point where you're making a lot of money and you're building your own personal wealth. And in, in reference to what I was talking about earlier with 401ks and what's been happening in the world and the economy, if you understood what was going on in the market and you understood how to read a chart and analyze it, you could even be looking at what your investment advisors have you in in reference to your 401ks. And usually they're, they're in 
uh, different funds that may have different stocks in them, you could look at it and pull up the charts and say, what's in this fund? I want to know exactly what's in it. Apple, Amazon, what? NVIDIA, ask them. You have a right to this information and you can look at every chart and make a decision and determine if you think that this is something that you even want to be in, that you even want to be in at all. And so again, it's your money. I always found that the best person to make the best decision about your own money is you. But I think a lot of people lack confidence and they do not trust themselves. And people's confidence really goes down the toilet once they start losing money. And, and then people start losing more money because they really just do not know how to do. And they get frustrated and they get angry. And the reality is what they did probably never really worked consistently. And it's hard for people to take a step back to that and learn something new. So anyways, for me, I have a checklist that I go through each and every morning in the pre-market to go through my daily picks to find the best thing to do. I do not know what I'm doing tomorrow, and I won't know until I get up in the morning. So every single day, I may do a different stock. And I don't trade the market every day either. If the market has a good gap, I'll look to do it. But I'm not trading it every day. I'm looking at it every day, though. <coughs> You also need a method and structure to enter and exit. That's another thing. You can't get in something and stay in it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. What I'm doing, the gap trading, is based on something called momentum. Again, we talked about volatility. With volatility, you get momentum as long as you get in the right direction, but you can't forget to exit your trades. We get really good entries where we're in options time pretty good where we're early so that whether we get out right away or hold really is neither here nor there because the momentum is on our side. But you've got to know where you're exiting trades. For me, for the day trades, I like to be in and out quick between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'll get out of an option the same day if it goes the same day, but I might end up being an option for two or three days if I'm waiting for it to go because, again, I want the momentum. I'm trying to see momentum. What is momentum? In a stock that gaps up, I'm looking for the momentum to go up higher, buying, money coming in to buy the stock up. In momentum in a gap down, I'm looking for selling or shorting, which pushes the price down. Again, we've seen that in the market. So again, everything I'm doing is momentum trading. And what I find interesting too is a lot of traders don't know how to momentum trade. And in this particular market, again, the market the brand in 2022, they don't know how to momentum trade. And it's important because really that's the only way you're going to make a lot of money as one individual with a small account. And I mean, you can get big moves, $2, $3, $4, $5 moves, even in something like the market or $20 moves in something like the market, which is real momentum. And you could have a thousand shares of something and have a jimongous day. It is about getting the momentum. That's how you get somewhere with this, where you can have a larger account and build it up. And what the benefit is that you can pay yourself and then risk more once you grow your account. Any questions here so far? So anyways, you know, if you know what someone's going to do before it does it, it's great. I'm not predicting the gap. I'm seeing the gap. So I let the gap happen. Then I predict where it's going to go on that particular day, on that day, okay? So again, it's 3.50 Eastern Time Tuesday. I don't know where the market's going to gap down tomorrow. I can give you the scenarios and tell you what it's going to do based on these scenarios. But the reality is, if I get up in the morning and I see the gap tomorrow, then I will predict where it's going to go on the day, tomorrow being Wednesday. Now let's talk about day trades. So here were some day trades that we did in the last month. I do use my gap system for day trades and for options. The benefit of the difference is in when you're doing day trades, you need to have a margin account. When you're doing options, you don't need a margin account. So if someone, like I said, only has $2,000 or, or $5,000, you can open up an options account because all you pay is the cost of the option. When you have a, and when you want a day trade, you have to take the position and you need something called buying power to take the full position and you need a margin account. The broker is giving you buying power. It doesn't mean that that's the cash amount. It means you must be in and out and flat before the end of the day. If you do not know what a margin account is, you can call a broker and ask them. You can trade. U.S. stocks from anywhere in the world, as long as you can open up an account to trade U.S. stocks. Again, when we're doing day trades, we typically look to short. I will short, I will go long. It's both that I like to do, but I do prefer to short, quite frankly. Now, let's look here. This is the price of Zoom. In fact, I have not looked at this actually for a little bit here. It looks like this was today's Zoom. 
Oh, no, that was yesterday, Zoom. I'm sorry. I don't know where this is today. This was where it was yesterday. So let's take a look at the day that we did. It was 3-2. 3-2. Shall we enter the trade short? Oh, I don't know why I have the, the zero, zero there. Originally, I had 800 shares. Sorry about that. This is supposed to be 800. So I entered the trade short at 117.50 with 800 shares. Then I added, I doubled my position sizing. I doubled it up to 1,600 shares. I added at the same price, okay? So my average price was the same. Why did I do this? I'm going to show you the one minute in a minute because I thought it was going to drop lower. So I wanted to take more of the trade because I only had 800 shares initially. It had a nice drop. Remember I was just talking about momentum? So this is almost three bucks. So entering at 117.50, exiting at 114.75 is almost a $3 drop. That's a nice move. Even if I had kept the original 800 shares, I would have made half that. I would have made over two grand. But I added, because I really liked it, profit 4,400. So here, this was 3-2. Let's, Let's look, look at the, the daily 3-2. First, we're going to look, look at the gap, gap and I'll, I'll show you the one minute. minute. So, so this close here, this gap down, this tail is what we shorted. And again, I'm going to show you the one minute chart. So even look at how this closed, which is really funky here. We made money shorting this. We got almost three dollars out of it. Remember, I was telling you about hitting a bullseye. This is what I'm talking about. Boom! You just go after it. You find that little hidden nugget. So this closed here. It gapped down. I liked it to drop. It did. We got into it early. We got the drop. Boom! And then you get out. Because again, you have to get out. And particularly if you're day trading, this was a day trade on margin, you, you must book it. I'm never holding a day trade overnight. But anyways, that was supposed to be 800 there. So I doubled up. Let's look at the one minute. So here is the day. So this was 3-1 over here. This is 3-2. That's the day we shorted it. Now again, we got in this a little late. I shouldn't say late, but a little late. Okay, but here, like normally I would have been in this earlier. We could have gotten this up in the 120s. I don't remember why I didn't do this early on the day. Anyways, we ended up getting in it roughly right about in here. And then here's the drop. Boom. So this is what I call the money move. Remember we were talking about momentum? Here is momentum on the one minute in Zoom. It's falling. This is to the downside. Okay, so we can look at Zoom and see what this is doing today. This is another stock that has been absolutely clobbered uh, really in the last few months as well. A stock that you would have thought would continue up and up. So many people are still working from home. Again, I don't follow the fundamentals. I really am a technical person. I'm looking at the chart and averaging, uh, you know, looking at the advanced technical analysis to look at the chart, but some people love fundamentals. Like they love, 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 love stuff with this. But I will say, even though I don't follow that or make trading decisions based on fundamentals, it is kind of surprising that Zoom has tight. I, I guess part of that is the market too. Let me see a question here. What would be the recommended account size to generate average 20% return monthly? Again, I don't work off of percentages. So let's talk about two things. We're going to talk about return on investment and risk to reward. First of all, if you're looking at a return on investment, on average, I'd say 50% to do an option is a good return on investment. So, for example, if you're taking a risk in an option of $1,000, what's a good risk? $500. Bucks. I mean, a good return on investment? $500. Do some trades go more than that? Absolutely. But if you want to be conservative, you could set your sell order at $500 bucks if you risk 1000 so I don't go by percentages as far as account size because I'm not a long-term investor. I think you're thinking long-term investments. I look at return on investment for my options, trying to get 50% or more, ideally 100% of my trades. And when I'm doing day trades, which I'm doing on margin, it's something called risk to reward because to take the Zoom trade and I'm just roughing it out here, a thousand shares of the Zoom trade, you would have needed in buying power and I, if you don't understand what I'm saying here, ask me, but I'm going to say it anyways because of the question. You would have needed $117,500 in BP. That does not mean that you would have needed 
uh, $500 in cash. And I'm talking about if you if you took 1,000 shares, okay? If you had a retail account, you would have needed about 29,000 in change cash to take a full position of 1,000 shares of Zoom to short it, okay? That drop got you profits of what? Three bucks, let's say. So you, if you if you if you took it and you risked a thousand, you could have made three thousand, but you needed twenty nine thousand to take the position. But the risk was not th the risk was not uh, three thousand. So I forget where we put the stop in this. It probably was over one eighteen. So let's just use an easy example. Say I risked a dollar, put a stop a one buck over it. And we took a thousand shares. You would have risked a thousand and made three thousand. In that case, your return on investment is three to one. And if you want to look at percentages, it's three hundred percent. But that's not how I look at day trading on margin because you've got to have that cash there to take the position, and that varies from stock to stock. Uh, we did Ford. Okay, we did Ford. Ford is way cheaper than Zoom, so you may not need the same buying power for Zoom, Ford. If we do the SPY or the Qs, you're going to need more because of the cost of those. So I don't look at it about percentages because it depends, one, if you're doing an option, two, if you're doing a day trade, and it, three, it depends on the price of the stock that you're trading because you're going to need the cash there to take it. Does that make sense? So I don't look at it exactly that way, TD. I think you're thinking of something like long-term investments. I look at it like I'm getting in the trade, and I'm looking for one to one in my day trades. If I'm risking a thousand in a day trade, I want to make a thousand. If I'm risking two thousand in a day trade, I'm trying to make two thousand. If I'm risking in an option a thousand, I want to make five hundred to a thousand. Not that I can't make more, but that's what my expectation is. So I, I don't know if that answers your question. But this isn't about investing. So it's not about taking a hundred grand and saying, well, if I take I have a hundred thousand dollars in my account, how much can I expect to make in a month? It depends how many trades you take. It depends what your risk is going to be. And you can tell me what you think you want to risk. Say you have $100,000 in an account. Do I think that you should be risking $10,000 in a day trade? No. No, I don't. It Could you? Sure, you could. But it, effectually, you'd be risking one-tenth of your account in one position, which I think doesn't make any sense. But that $100,000 cash would allow you $400,000 buying power at a broker, at a retail broker for four to one margin. And that's a good size account to be able to do any one of the number of things that we're doing. Zoom, BA, SPY, Q, Diamonds, all kinds of things that we're trading because you could do expensive things if you've got that kind of money. You can take 1,000 shares, you can take 2,000 shares, do you follow me? And as far as options go, same principle. Say you want to do an option, and we will talk about those in a little bit too. Say you want to do an option. Say you want to do an Amazon. It costs five grand for one contract because that's how expensive those puppies can be. Say you say, okay, you could, if you had 100 grand in an account, take two contracts, which would cost you 10,000. I still wouldn't do it because it's one tenth of your account. I still wouldn't risk one tenth of your account in one trade. And in reference to an option, that is what you're risking because it's on cash, it's not margin. You have to have the money there. You can't lose more than you risk, but you are taking it. And many times you're holding it overnight and you should never risk one tenth of your whole account overnight in the trade. I hope that answers your question. Um, do I trade stocks ETF? Do I trade stocks? Yes, we're talking about Zoom. Zoom is a stock. Do I trade ETFs? Yes, we just talked about the SPY and the Qs. I don't trade futures. So I trade gaps. I do them as options and day trades. Um, what else? I think that's it. Okay. Uh, all right, let's talk about another one here. BA. BA is without a shadow of a doubt the chart of the week, the trade of the week. We did the 200 puts. We did the 195 puts. We did the 190 puts. We did the 187.50 puts. We did the 180 puts, and the day I called the 180 puts, I, I don't think, I got some emails from people where you're saying, are you thinking this is going to keep going? And it did. It did. BA opened this morning, I think I think under 170, I think it was 169 and change or something. I don't know what the low of the day was. We can look at this chart. Again, getting back to what I was saying with momentum, it's so interesting to me how people are like, oh my God, it, that I don't understand. What are you talking about? 
you know, I mean, again, the reality is that people really that are actively, actively, actively trained just consistently to me, uh, want to do something that's tricky and seems to make no sense whatsoever at all. And what I'm doing to me makes perfect sense. But quite frankly, what I'm doing makes is, is actually just using common sense. While I'm actively looking at the charts and reading the gaps, I mean, it is amazing to me how many people want to just go long every dip, every dip in the world. They just want to do it. And they're losing, 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 losing all year. So, I mean, if you walk away today from anything, anything at all, stop buying the dip. I don't care what it is. Don't do it anymore. It doesn't work. And I don't care if it worked every day in 2021. It doesn't work. It just doesn't. It's not just not working this year. It full on flat out doesn't work consistently. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Think about GME. People made a lot of money doing that at one point. The one time it worked, that's it. Done. You have to be consistent with what you're doing. This was 228. 228 is here. Oh, this is really funny looking at this. We shorted this here and it flipped. <laughs> we got out with profit. The entry was 198.50. Shares was 1500. Risk was 2700 bucks. Exit was 196.90. So we pulled about a buck 50, buck 60 out of this before it flipped. This is really funny here now looking at this. I forgot what it did. Profit was 2400. Again, one to one. Close enough. My target was 197. Broke it. Boom. Out. Again, one to one. One to one. So take it over here. This closed here, gap down. We shorted this. This little tiny, 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 tiny tail was the profit that we made. And we got out of it. It flipped. But it's really funny here because we did do puts in this and the puts worked. Look what it did after the fact. Boom. I forgot that we did this this day because I was out before it flipped. Here, here, here was one minute. Stock closed here, gap down, open. Boom. We got it. I'm pretty aggressive. I'm pretty aggressive. If you follow me, if you want to do trial for the room, you can email me, but I just hit it. Boom. In, out, done. Profit, done. That was in one minute. But that flipped. Look at that. I forget what happened there, why that did that. That was a Monday. Yeah, it was a 28th. So again, this would be a trade on margin. So again, you can open up a prop account. What's a prop account? Well, at a retail account, you need 25,000 a day trade. You get four to one margin. A prop account, you're gonna get 10 to one margin or maybe more at some places. You need a minimum usually of 2,500 or sometimes 5,000. So you open an account with 5,000, you get 10 to one margin of 50,000 BP to trade. So then you can only do as many shares as you can do based on the cost of the stock that we're doing. So that's what you, know, that's what you have to work with. Again, I was talking about it there earlier. How do you make your dreams come true? You gotta do the work. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. And sometimes the work is, I wish I had a million dollars and I could trade if I, I'll just wait till I do. Well, meanwhile, years and years and years and years and years of life have passed you by and many opportunities to trade and just trade to make the money that you want to trade. Instead, people are just like pie in the sky about it. Uh, again, I do not understand this, this mentality. I've never been pie in the sky about things. Well, I have big aspirations for myself and big dreams for myself. I consider them goals. So I take active steps towards my goals. That is the only way to achieve your goals. You must have a plan of action and you must take actionable steps to achieve those goals. That's it. Just like if you were running to stop smoking, you're like, how am I going to kick this habit? You have to take real steps to kick it. You know, you're not just going to get up one day tomorrow and all of a sudden quit cold turkey. You probably get sick. You have to wean yourself off. You have to figure out what to do, whatever the case may be. Or same if you wanted to exercise. You're going to exercise, exercise program, program or diet or lose weight. weight. Say you wanted to lose 50 pounds. It's, it's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a day. It's not going to happen without doing anything at all. You need real steps to get to your goals and achieve your dreams. The fact is you can take those steps. And the sooner you take the steps, the sooner the things that you want to happen are actually going to happen. Anyways, I use my system... Going through a 26-point checklist. This is everything you learned in the class from me if you decided to do the class. Like I said, it's March 26 and 27. But ultimately, the niche I have is that I'm looking for large institutional money, BA. BA is a good example of what happened there. Selling, 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 selling. Gaps are created with institutional money, large institutional money. That's what makes a gap in the first place. 
even though you have retail traders that are in the market. They're not in control of stocks, and they're not in control of the market. GME is a one-off. And I go back to that chart as a great example, because at the end of the day, they're not controlling it much, because no matter how much people want that stock to go back up to $500, it ain't ever going to happen unless institutions come in and buy it, or it ain't ever going to go there again. And people are waiting for it to go there, and they're long positions. Some people are in it like at crazy numbers, like three or $400. And, and they're down. So it's institutions. As much as people hate hedge funds, and I don't know why. I don't hate hedge funds. But as much as people hate them, the fact is that large institutional money is in control. It's in control even when you think it isn't. VA is actually a great example of that. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap, long or short, and confirm that the large money will flow with it. So again, how much money do you need and what kind of returns can you earn? One-to-one -one on day trades, and ideally, one-to-one -one in an option. But I'll take 50% in an option. I think that's a fine return on investment. Again, if you risk $2,500 in an option and can make $1,000, $1,200 in a day, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Nothing. Now, again, how much money you need is you need $25,000 at a retail account to trade on margin or prop. You can open it up with less. You can go anywhere that you want. I would do normal research on the companies that you want to go and open up an account with. <laughs> and I would also practice, like I said in a demo, if you've never traded before, before you press the button, as far as, you know, what is better for you, you have to look at your time. How much time do you have to devote to trading? I trade my, in a day trades in the morning between 9.30 and, and, and 10. If you can't be in the live room then, well, then you can't day trade with me. If you want to do options, like I said, you could have a regular job, do anything. You don't have to sit at your test all day. So really how to trade or what to trade or what methodology to use my gap system really depends on your own schedule and how much time you have to devote to trading. Obviously, the amount of money that you have, cash, determines the size of your positions and you can be more flexible if you have more money. So for example, say you have an account where you have 30 grand in it, you could take two or three or four or five contracts in an option, for example. So you could take four, you could take four spies, get the drop, you're in a put, get out of two, hold the other two. Same thing with Boeing. You could divvy up your position. If you could take more than one contract, then you can have the flexibility of doing that, okay? Book some, get the drop, hold a little more, get the second drop, okay? So that's another idea. Uh, let's talk about options here now since we were just talking about that. This is Facebook. We talked about the gap. It happened, seems like a million years ago, but it's only a month ago when the earnings collapsed. I'm using, I'm calling it a beginner risk, but I'm using an average of $1,000 here for this, um, for the risk. Actually, I don't know why this says advanced risk. This should say beginner. So the risk is 1140. 1140. Cost is 380. Three contracts. Risk is 1140. Sold at $12. Profit $2,460, which is a 216% return on in investment. Let's take a look at the trade. It was Thursday, <clears throat> the 13th. Now let's go find it. We were in. That was January, hold on here. I really have to go back. Here. I called the 3.30 puts. So I basically called it at the strike there. It was a little bit under it. So this was all the way back in January, actually before the, before the, uh, the earnings. The expiration date was 121. So what did it do? It dropped. Now, this is one, one example. Again, if you got out of this trade, it doesn't look like much. This was over 200% here. But if you take it over, you can see where it fell into, 310. Now, I do not hold stuff into the very, 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 very last day of expiration unless I'm down in the trade. If I'm down, like the trade is bust, 
not worthless, then I'll hold into the last day of expiration because I have nothing to lose. I can't lose anymore. I'm already down. It could come back the last day. In this case here, I would get out of it before the last day, but I just want to show you that this did go further the last day. Again, I don't think that you should necessarily hold the last day, particularly if you are up a good amount, which you were in this train, but this little tiny, 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 tiny thing here, again, finding the bullseye was a very profitable trade. It was a very profitable trade, but it was not even looks like much to you. Like these, this, you may be like, oh, that I can see. We did this here. Boom. It was a nice trade and it even went further. It went down to 300 the last day. It would have been up the last day the most, but again, it doesn't make sense to hold it. Anyways, nice trade. So this is an option if you want to do it. You get the newsletters emailed to you. The time this went out was 1017. Most of the trades I send in the pre-market, but sometimes I'll send them a little bit later. Netflix, what did we do with this one? We did, oh, the same day, same time, 520s. Let's go look at 113 Netflix. So closed here, gap down, boom, called the puts. This is an exit here. Now I'm going to show you what happened after this. Let's just talk about the trade that was the real trade. So the 520 puts, an exit on Thursday, the 20th, was profitable. One contract cost 1350 profit was 1050 return on investment 78%. Now, why do I have this number here? And what, what is this whole thing here? I did not hold this trade into the earnings. I want to show you that if you did, you could have made what you could have made. The, the actual, actual, actual close on the Friday of the last day of the earnings of the option strike price of the 520 puts in Netflix that I had called, a real trade that I did not hold to the last day, and I'll explain why in a minute, was 125. So you could have risked thirteen fifty and made eleven thousand one hundred fifty dollars. I did not. I did not hold it the last day. Why? Because the earnings were Thursday night to twentieth. It could have flipped around, and the trade was profitable. It wasn't one hundred percent, but I got done telling you. I think anything over fifty percent is a good trade. It would have been gambling to hold it into the earnings in a profitable trade. It would have risked the amount I had at risk. I would have risked the profit too. If the stock would have gapped up to 650, the trade would have lost. It wouldn't have had no more time left, and it would have never gone back down there anywhere to 520. Because if it had gapped up, it would have been too far away. So if you held that though into the last day, you could have made a ridiculous amount, whatever the return on investment is, a thousand percent or something. But this does show you though the power of the gap and the power really of even earnings reports in reference to doing options. But you're gambling if you're holding the trade that you're up in. Now, there are times when I have held trades into the earnings. Why? Not this one here. Why? Because I was down. I had nothing to lose. I was already down in the trade. The trade did not go in my favor. It could work in my favor in the earnings, in which case sometimes that occurs, and therefore then, then I get out. But the reality is when you have something like this, it's already up. The trade was already, already, already up. You, you got to get out of it. But it, it was an exit Thursday. Thursday the 20th, so it was a week before I called it, okay? But it, I mean, this just goes to show you how much money you can make doing options if you really want to. Uh, let's talk about the spy. Okay, we did some spies. 113, same day. We did the 471 spies, cost 340, three contracts is 1,020, risk sold at 24, this is, this is a huge trade. So again, I'm averaging a risk here of 1,000, 6180. 606% what happened. Same day I called it. We're going back to January. Take it up here. Wait, there's the guy. So here we are. It was around roughly the strike at the 471. Then we did this and then we did this. Now here we are again. This is the 20th of January. Beautiful trade. It dropped down here, fell under 450. That's how it was so profitable. You would have made more. This is, I don't know what it was that day. 
So this was this is the exit the day before. You couldn't have screwed this straight up. It was just up, 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 up every day. And if you held it the last day, you could have made more. I don't know what it was. I didn't look that up. I looked up Netflix because that size of the gap was so big. I really wanted to see what the price of the option was. I did not look this up. But if you take it over here, it broke 440. So it's at least 30 points through it, even with any cushion in here. Again, not suggesting anyone should ever do that. But this is, was a huge return on investment to even exit it before the last day because of the fact the trade was up every day and just fell straight down. We were talking about momentum. We were talking about selling. Here it is. Boom. But again, fell the last day too. I get this question. People are like, well, is that the maximum, maximum, maximum exit? No. There's many trades I get out and the trades still keep going. That's not the point of trading. I, my job is to find the best gap. Then I take the direction in the correct direction of the gap. Then I get very good entries. And then I look to make money. Whether you get out early, in the middle, wherever you get out with profit, you have more choices if you're in early to hold or split the position or whatever you want to do. It, it's impossible, I think, to make as your goal to have a perfect, perfect, perfect exit. Why sometimes we do have perfect exits. I'm going to go back to that one here. Now that I'm thinking about this, this week, this was, was a low of the day exit, exit here in this PA that, that day we did it. We had a low of the day exit. This was a low of the day in here. Now I didn't know that at the time, but it was. So sometimes I will have a perfect exit, but I did it in Netflix and I did it in the spy. So, you know, you just, you do the best you can. So you need good money management. Goals per day, per week, per month. Goals should be based on a risk unit. Whatever it's going to be. And you can't change it all the time. You can't do 5,000 in Amazon and 1,000 in the spy. No. Because if Amazon loses, you have to take five trades just to make break, come back break even, even in a good win in the, in the one. You, you have to be consistent with your risk. You have to look at it by weekly goals and monthly goals. So that's what I would do. And if you have questions about that, you can always ask me. Getting back to what we were talking about earlier, though, you can make your own choices to make more money. You're not going to change the price of goods and services. You're not going to change world events. You're not going to change what's happening with politics either, that people are making decisions, what's happening with the world events. You can't change any of those things. But you are in charge of your own life, and you are in charge of your own money, and you can decide if you want to do something different too. But it's going to take work. Nobody's going to throw it into your lap. And I think people have got a little little used to that, especially people that got the stimulus in the last two years. I, you know, look at that as a bonus, as a gift. That's not real life, and it's not something that's going to consistently come to people. Just like you get up every day, you got to go work hard at your job. That is what it is. And if you want to get involved with training, you're going to have to do the work too. It doesn't mean you're going to work hard every day forever. It means you're going to work hard to learn it. Or you're going to work hard to get the hang of it, or there's a cost involved, and just paying the cost is hard work for people because a lot of times it takes people to wrap their head around paying for something when they don't know how much money they're going to make or how it's going to work, and they don't even know what they're doing. That's part of what it is. That's part of what trading is taking risk. When I put a trade on and I'm taking the risk, I fully believe that I'm going to win in every trade. While I don't, I believe that I will, but it's part of taking risk. You put the risk on. That's why I use a stop. So I call the stops in the live room if you're in the room. And you put the stop in. If it gets stopped out, the trade loses. This is what part of taking risk is. I could have lost in any one of these trades I talked to you about here today. I didn't. I didn't, but I could have. That's part of what trading is. And I think a lot of people want to trade and they're interested in trading, but they really are not honest with themselves about their ability to be able to take risk. If you have to do that. And I say, if you are scared and you're in a trade, then you need to cut it back. Cut your risk back. Do less trades. Do one trade a day or something if you feel yourself being nervous or jittery about what you're doing. If you lack conviction in what you're doing, you probably don't have a strategy at all or your risk is too great. So back it off because the best thing you can do for yourself is to trade comfortably, 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 not nervous. You don't want to be a nervous Nelly when you're in trades. You can feel that right now with people in the market. You absolutely can. I'm not trading like that, but I can see it when I'm watching how the market moves. Today was a great example of that. Again, we'll see where we close when I pull up the charts here in a bit. But success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. And if you don't have one, then you need one. So again, we talked about how do you become successful day trading. And again, I don't care if you do options or day trades. you got to have a good system to do it. 
And it's, it's just not something that's going to fall into your lap. You have to learn it. It takes having a niche. For me, it's gaps. And specifically, specifically for me, it is shorting. But everything is based on reading institutional money that's in the stock and in the market. So if you come and learn from me, you would learn a 26-point ratings checklist. That pinpoints the direction of the gap. It's the footprints of institutional money in the gaps. That's how I made the call on BA. That was just a really good call. Um, all the strikes that we did in that just went boom, boom, boom. And even as I was calling them, people were emailing me. I mean, they were shocked and every trade worked and people were shocked how everyone worked. You've got to look at what's happening because the people that control the market are the people that have the money. Let's look at CVX. So yesterday, I don't have this chart in from today, but I know what it did. Yesterday, I called calls in CVX. It popped up today. It gapped up today. It worked. It ran right up. I called the 160 calls today, and I mean yesterday, and then I called the 170 calls today. They both worked. They both worked. We can look at this chart. Again, momentum. Momentum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Today was the eighth day. It ran up here, flew over 172. I don't know where it closed. It doesn't matter. So we played it. It worked. So this was a long. We did calls, okay? What do I mean by institutional money? This is getting bought. This is getting bought. It's getting bought. I mean, full stop. It's, you know, again, this is an oil stock. What do I mean by institutional money on Facebook? Facebook has been selling off, okay? And again, started here, fell off a cliff, even though we did this prior to. Again, I don't know where this closed today, but this has broke so many numbers. So many numbers, 300, 200. So how do I figure all this out? Before we get in the position, I read it. Gaps are an event. It creates a sense of urgency. Hurry up, it could be buying, it could be selling. Again, I prefer to short, but I will go long. I went long the CVX. An action is being forced by participants of the stock, people that are already in it. And that is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. So trading is, you know, trading gas. And specifically, I called my class and the way that I rate them, I called them golden gas because it's like finding gold in the market to find something to do that has such a big move and to happen so quickly. But the fact is it's trading with power of money. That's how you can make money. You've got to make good choices when you trade. I do not find that trading all over the place and doing a million different things is a way to make it in this business. You have to have a solid system. If you don't, that's probably why you're losing. If you're losing, or maybe you're risking too much, or maybe you're over trading, or maybe you're buying the dip and that's not working this year. But I don't think it would ever work as something to consistently do. And consider yourself lucky if you did it last year and it worked. Some of the stocks are still holding. Some of the moves of people were in them as swing trades. Will that last? I don't know. To ask me where I think we're going to be by June 1st is asking a million things. It's a lot easier for me to tell you where we're going to go in five minutes to take a trade and get out or tomorrow morning and take a trade and get out than it is to tell you where we're going to be three months from now. That is neither my concern. We are active, active, active traders. We are chunking it out, like I said. We are pulling money out. This is income trading. This isn't long-term investing. It's very difficult to see. It's like saying, well, who do you think is going to win the election in 2024? I have no idea. I don't even know who's running. Is Russia going to take over Ukraine? The probability is high, no matter what they say about not being want to be involved with NATO. The prob probability is still high that Ukraine will fall to Russia. And what will that mean for the rest of the world? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So you can only control and predict the things that are in your universe. And the short term really is the way to make money. And again, I go back to the same thing about chunking it out. So the system, if you want to come and learn from me, my system is how do you make money in the market? You're going to trade golden gaps. You're what to train. Gaps at rate 20 points or more per the system. I'm rating on 26. I don't need a perfect score. 20 is good. I get them early in the morning. You saw some of those options were early too. Sometimes I call them in the pre-market. We can't trade options till after the open, but I get them when they set up and trigger and we go. So it's about good choices and having a plan of action and chunking it out. I think you could make, like I talked to a guy yesterday. He said, I'd be happy making $800 a week. I said, okay. And then I said, how much money do you have? This is how much you should risk. This is what you're looking to do. Take what you have and then back it off and figure out your goals from there. That's how you're going to get somewhere with it. Instead of complaining and saying, I wish I had this or I'll wait till then or whatever. You know, the future never comes unless we create it. We have to take actionable steps, like I said, to be able to create the goals that we want. And sometimes that means work. The nice thing about trading is we don't trade on the weekends. We got weekends off. 
So you're gonna work during the week in between your job doing options or in the morning day trading for the first half hour of the day. But I'm the one that's doing the work when I get up. I rate the gap for the options newsletter. The newsletters are emailed to you in live time. You don't take a class for that. If you wanna sign up for a subscription, you just sign up. For the day trades, I'm also doing the work rating the gaps in the morning. I get up super duper early. And I'm the one that has the conviction, the confidence, but you should learn to get this yourself because you will trade better. You will trade better. And people are consistently worried in this type of market because there's been fake outs. Something fakes higher, something fakes lower. Again, BA is a grand example of that as well. But you do have to have money management. <coughs> We've been talking about this the whole time. You have to set a risk. It should be consistent. You shouldn't be afraid to use stops either. Um, and again, you have to have more winning trades than losing trades. You won't make it. You just won't if you're losing more than you're winning. It's great to have some big winners, and we have had some of those this year. But in general, I'm just looking for consistent wins. But every once in a while, we get a big winner, and then that's nice. And it certainly makes up the difference then to cover the two or three that we lose. But it is about quality for me, whatever your goal is, whatever you want to earn. And again, it depends where you live, depends what your lifestyle is, depends what you're doing, if this is extra money, if it's full time, whatever you want it to do. And we did talk about this earlier, the return on investment versus uh, return on risk. It's different for options and day trades. Okay, again, because if you look at some of my day trades, you say, oh my God, that's a thousand percent, you know, return investment. It's not really because you need the cash that you need there. But I could take a, a day trade and I could risk $2,000 and I could make six. <laughs> I, you know, I don't look at that as 300%. I look at that as three to one. I, I you know, I risk 2,000 to make three times that. That's how I look at it. I look at it differently for my options. If I put on $8,000 risk in an option and I make eight, that's 100% for me. And I think that's a good trade or whatever the amount is you want to risk, okay? So I just look at them differently. <clears throat> and I also look at my targets differently because I will hold options longer than I will hold my day trades. And, you know, I like to be in and out fast because you never know what the market's going to do in the day. And stocks will go with the market and mostly on any given days. And the market's been wild. It's been really wild. So making money overall is about consistency and correct trade selection and then not over trading. Okay, we talked about that not taking too much risk, chunking it out. You wanna increase the odds of your own success by looking what's happening with institutional money and not going with retail traders. And even though everyone here is a retail trader, I hate to say it, but most retail traders do lose trading. They do things that don't make any sense, to be honest with you. And I know this from teaching people now for over 10 years. I try to teach people the best I can that wanna come and learn from me and do the class. But if you don't wanna learn and just wanna sign up for the subscriptions, that's up to you. I think you will do better though if you learn, but that's totally your choice. You can just take the trains. And there are people with me that are having success that have never taken the class. But it is power money that I'm looking at. And again, I rate the gap in the morning using the checklist. This is what you learn in the class. It's where is the money going? Where are we going next? That is extremely, extremely, extremely important because if you can get in before the move happens, that's where the profit is. And where you get out is up to you. You have sees it, you get out early, you hold it, it's up to you. Just make sure you get out with money. You know, you don't want to hold something too long. But like the CVX is even a good example of that. <clears throat> I mean, to get in that yesterday <laughs> and have that gap up today. But I'm very deliberate in my choices. I, I have, have conviction in what, what I'm doing. doing. I'm here, people call me, they email me questions. Even, you know, people that have been clients for years. It's a system I've been using since I started trading. Like I said, it took me three years to create it. And I do think if people want to do this for a living, I'm certainly here to help you get a plan of action to do that. As far as the share of quantity and size you're going to take, it does have to do with your cash. And as far as the broker, you can go anywhere you want. I have no affiliation with any broker. You can make your charts look like mine in any place if you want. But I do think it's important to put a plan of action in place before you train. And again, if you're trading this year and you're losing money in the last two, month, two and a half months, you have to stop what you're doing and get a plan of action in place. Just pull out a notebook and say, number one, this is what I'm going to do next. Number two, this is what I'm going to do next. Number three, by April 1st, I'm going to do this. And that will help you do it. If you decide you want to take the class, you will learn my method. It determines the high probability of directional bias for the entire day. A big move. you got to get big moves. Early confirmation and precise entries with a good risk-reward 
and follow through. For me, I think it's only one thing that I'll ever do because this works. And I've just added size over the years as I've been trading. I did start out doing options. I started doing that about seven years ago, almost eight. And I never planned to teach people when I created my system, which is one of the reasons I think it works so well. I did it for me. But I found there's a lack of information out there about gaps, and most of what's out there is wrong or incorrect. People are confused about gaps. They don't understand how good they are and how much fun they are to train. But it's really, really about picking the best gap to play each morning. You only need one trade a day to make money. You don't have to trade all day. And in fact, I close the trading room by 10, 15, 10, 30 every day. So people are doing really well you know, this year. The truck driver I talked to about made 35 grand in two weeks doing options. He did not tell me how much he's risking to trade, and I didn't ask him. But, I mean, that kind of thing is phenomenal. When people are losing and then they start making money, their confidence really turns around. I think what hurts traders is when they go two years, five years, ten years, stories I've heard for 20 years people are trading and losing. I don't know how they keep going. You can't keep doing the same thing that's losing. You cannot. It is just stupid, to be honest with you. Um, and I ready to go over the information when my class is. It's March 26th and 27th. You can go to the website if you want more information. You can email me if you want a trial for this week. It's melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Um, we already talked about this. I want, to, I want to bring the charts up here, and I see we have it half an hour. So again, here's the dates of the class. Here's my email. And then here's a special. You sign up by Friday, get the trading room free to the end of the year. The class is the end of the month. And then the options newsletter, six months is a long time in the newsletter for $49.99 and 12 months for $69.99. This, the newsletters are emailed to you in live time. Take the trade when you get it. Targets are on the letter. Now, I think I have to stop screen sharing to go to my charts. Well, I, you know, I haven't talked to him. I, I haven't talked to him. I've been highlighting which is very interesting. I, I've been highlighting individual people in the emails. And I have been highlighting, like, what did they do for a living? And when did they start trading? And asking them to send pictures of me, which some of them have. I have not asked the trucker for a picture. Again, I think he might get in trouble if I said the company is working for now. So I think his eventual goal is to retire from talking to him when he originally signed up. And um, he hasn't done the big class yet, but, you know, I have to follow up with him about doing the class in March. But anyways, it, you know, people share with me what they want to share with me. But I have been highlighting different individuals who have emailed me their success just this year. And it is interesting to hear what people's plans are or how they are trading or how much money they're making and what they're doing. And it is wonderful to see that people are successful. And it just goes to show you that you can do it. But again, I, I am calling the trades. So I've been calling a lot of good trades. It doesn't mean that I'll never call another losing trade again. We, we did lose last week. I called Apple puts. I will tell you, they didn't work. But we pretty much really are not doing that many losing trades this year. And the volatility is there too, which really helps because obviously you make more when you get bigger moves. How long it lasts, I do not know. But we're certainly going to take advantage of it as long as it lasts. I still have a great system, meaning we win more than we lose anyways. But I think the benefit of this year is we've had some huge, huge moves. Boeing is one of those moves. And I showed you that one market trade, which is, was even weeks ago now. When you take a trade and something drops and you're in a put and it drops 30, 40, 50 points, I mean, come on, you have one contract you're making bank. I mean, the, you know, it's just, but I will tell you that the cost, uh, since, since January, since January through even now, March, the cost of at-the-money options puts is like doubled, like seriously. Now, again, I don't know where we're going to go tomorrow in the market. I may decide to go long tomorrow. I don't know. Or Monday or something. I don't know. But I have really noticed that the cost of trades we did four weeks ago, six weeks ago compared to today has really shot up like a rocket. And then that, then that contributes to get, again, all the volatility in the market has contributed to the cost of things rising even to, to, to trade at the money, but you could do a strike away from it. Um, okay. I think I have to stop this. So let me just stop this here and here, email me if you want a trial for the week.